Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and today, for science, we are playing the infamous free white deck. So, if you missed the kerfuffle about this deck a few days ago, here is the story of this deck and why we are playing it today. So... A few days ago, Wizards published the deck list that went 5-0 in Leagues on Magic Online, and this deck list popped up, and that was notable for two reasons. First, the deck list is wonky. Like, White Weenie is a tier archetype in Standard, but this is very much not tier White Weenie. There's a lot of two-ofs, there's Gavini Trappers and Canyon Jerobas and just all kinds of really weird stuff that you would not expect to see in a competitive mono white deck. More importantly, the deck list was essentially free. It actually showed up as $0 over on MTGO Fish when I looked at it. Uh, in paper, it was like 12 bucks or something. It was some amount of cents on Magic Online. There's no rares, there's no mythics. And that got me kind of excited. The idea that a $0 deck might actually be competitive, that would be awesome. That's like every budget player's dream that you can put together a pile of cards that cost no money at all and actually win games with it and win prizes with it and grind into all, you know, a more expensive deck and rares and mythics and all the glory. So that was really exciting. So I tweeted about the deck. So normally Magic Online results are pretty dependable. Uh, Magic Arena results like that we do on Meme or Dream, who knows with those deck lists? They're anonymous. You don't know what player actually played them. We've seen enough weird stuff like some deck lists that are 60 lands show up saying that they got six wins in a row to be a little skeptical or think maybe there's bugs in the arena deck list system. But on Magic Online, especially the league results, you got actual player names. On Magic Online, you can see all your old games. You actually have a game history and you can watch replays of them so you can kind of prove if you actually got wins with it. So normally the results are pretty reliable for Magic Online. But the theory from some people on how a deck could Go 5-0 in a league without actually doing that is essentially cheating, win trading. So the theory is a person could join a Magic Online league with multiple accounts and essentially try to play against each other, hope to queue into each other, and then have one account that always concedes, and then the other account would always win because if you play two leagues on Magic Online and you go zero and five, zero wins in the first one and then five wins in the second one, you actually profit. The five win league outweighs your zero win league and you actually make money by doing that so there's actually kind of this weird financial incentive that someone could try to scam the system by playing against themselves on multiple accounts and conceding to each other so that's people's theory on how this deck could be published as a 5-0 list without actually winning five matches and some people were really adamant about this there was one person in specific that uh, offered $200 of magic online ticks if the deck could just go two and three in a league in a standard league and then a thousand thousand dollars of magic online takes if it could go five and oh in a league that's how skeptical some people were that this deck could win but i actually think it's possible that this deck could win we've played enough really janky decks that i think that a deck that's just a huge pile of one drops even if they're not good one drops you hit the right matchups, you run well, you curve out your opponent, you know, stumbles on mana. Like that's a recipe to win games, regardless of what those one drops might actually be. So today for science, we're gonna play the deck and see, is it possible that the infamous free white deck can win it all? Like, can it win it all? Is it really possible to get five wins in a league? That's what we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna stop rambling. That is the story of the infamous free white deck. and. Let's play some games and see. Is it possible or is someone scamming Magic Online and getting their list published for no reason? Need some new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards? Well, you can get them from our amazing sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish and even get a free goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. All right, here we go. Match number one with Free White and eh, we'll keep it. We got some one drops and a... Uh, and a mouse. What more could we possibly need? Opponent, Lair of the Hydra. It looks like mono green. I think we're actually just gonna start with the tap land, unfortunately. We can tap land here. Next turn, we can start growing the Monk of the Open Hand. Abodent. Green, white, interesting. Well, play a land, Monk of the Open Hand. And Monk of the Open Hand. You. Well, hopefully our opponent's not playing sweepers. Sweepers are the thing I'm scared of with this deck, I think. Opponent, land, and brutal Kathar. Hmm. Well, play the takedown. Play Battlefield Raptor. 
pass the turn. Unfortunately, we can't portable hole the brutal Cathar opponent land. Tangled Florahedron and Fortels. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, Battlefield Raptor, portable hole. Get rid of the Florahedron and go attacking. All right, opponent down to 17. What would they foretell? Oh, if that's a bunch of angels, that's pretty bad. Yasharn. All right, that's big. Bone it gets a bunch of lands. Sure. No blocks. Down to 18. Now well, play the mouse. Get in with the flyers past the turn. These reduced memories aren't feeling very good. Not, not feeling super great. Jeez, all right, all the Brutal Cathars. Mm-hmm, and a, wow, all right. Well, opponent is kind of a control deck by the looks. Goes attacking. Well, kill the Brutal Cathar. Get back the mouse. Edge at a 14. Ugh, I don't think we got off to a fast enough star, and our opponents had, whew, nigh infinite removal spells here. True and star nine unleashed and dead. Well, an inauspicious start for free white. No, no sideboard, of course. Who needs a sideboard to go five in a standard league? Well, that was an awkward draw. We didn't draw many one drops and we drew both reduced to memories, which I think is the worst card in the deck by a pretty significant margin. Well, we're on the play, which is good. We were on the draw last game. Wow, that hand is as bad as a hand can be. Uh, this hand's not good, but we get to put the reduced to memory to the bottom. So we're gonna count that as some level of a win. The sand does not excite me though, that's for sure. We will keep, get rid of the reduced to memory. Well, we need to draw lands and non-lands. That's a, uh, not a great situation to be in. I guess lands first ideally and then non-lands. Well, boom, Battlefield Raptor. Can you beat it? Thinking, oh my God, that's not a land. Well, hit you for one. I guess we just pass. I don't think we just run out the code spell cleric. About it, undaps. Prosperous Innkeeper. All right, MDFC. As much as I love MDFCs, this is not, not the best time for an MDFC. Opponent goes to 18 temporarily. Sure. Well, two Prosperous Innkeepers is, uh, that's kind of an issue. It's a lot of mana and a lot of life. We're gonna have to deal, we're gonna have to deal a ridiculous amount of damage to get through double Prosperous Innkeeper. Well, Battlefield Raptor, go to combat, hit ya. Down to 70, so we've got what, four? But it's, hmm, all right, but it has Skyclave Apparition. Opponent is all about the removal. Opponent passes, well, play a tap land. Go to combat, attack you. Opponent takes it. Oh, but they're still at 18, these innkeepers. Opponent, land, and. Jeez, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess the goddess. Oh yeah, this, uh, this start seems difficult for our deck to beat. Well, I mean, I guess this is all we can really do. It's not good. But we killed a thing. Opponent passes, we draw a land now. I'll play the mouse in the plains. Go attacking. This is a, this is a very removal heavy green white deck. Golly gee. <laughs> oh, everything our opponent plays is a removal spell. Oh, I don't know what we're supposed to do about that. Yeah, play the Dawn Guard, play the land, pass the turd. Well, all right, sure, sure. <laughs> I almost don't know. I almost don't know if that should count. What a ridiculous uh, amount of removal for that deck to draw. Well, what do we learn? We learned if uh, if the free white deck runs into someone who draws a Skyclave Apparition every turn of the game for two games in a row, it's probably not gonna win. Lesson, lesson learned. Oh, that's a, uh, oh my God. So one of the things is with a, with a deck like this is I assume that you probably gotta, you probably gotta run well. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna 5-0 a, a league with a, with a pretty janky archetype, my assumption is you're probably gonna have to get a little lucky. 
Um, uh, so this isn't this isn't a deck I think is going to you know consistently five zero league. The problem is so far. I mean, we're only one match in, but the the luck has not been in our favor so far. We've lost both die rolls, which is already pretty bad. And then our opponent, whew, the mana removal, also not great. Uh, well, play the trapper, the raptor, and make a dork, and play the land, and go to combat. This is a reasonable start, though. Like, the deck is the deck's doing things. The deck is doing doing things. Like, look at the board. That's turn three. Five creatures. Opponent, regular storm seeker again. Gonna go attacking. We're not gonna block. We're gonna drop to fourteen. Opponent passes. I'll play the land, play the chaplain, go attacking. Oh, I really, I kind of want to flip this, but I don't think we can. I think we're just gonna have to tap something. Opponent, land, gold span dragon. Well, I mean, we have a, actually wait, this, we need a combat. All right, so let our opponent target first and then we tap it. Another land. Well, go to combat. Hit our opponent with the flyers. Oh, yeah, we would have liked to draw a non-land. Opponent goes to eight. A non-land would have been huge there. Okay, opponent. Land. Halana and Elena. Okay. Oh, this is going to be close. Counters on multiple things. We will tap the gold span. Opponent attacks with both. Oh, well, let's block. Go to 10. Untap even more lands. I'll play the land. Chaplain. Oh, hit ya. Wow, are we gonna end up just short because of the flood? Oh, we're so close, but we've just flooded out. We flooded out and drawn so many lands. We might end up like one. One drip of damage short. Opponent getting some triggers. This is so close. Okay. Wait, what has, that has haste and trample. Well, tap the big gold span. Opponent. I mean, I think a single one of our opponent's cards is worth more than our entire deck. Attacks, attacks. Maybe. Do we need to block this? Yeah, I guess we do. All right, so we block. I mean, tap gold span, hit you for four. Oh, that has reach. I guess that's on me. Huh, sneaky reach. Man, yeah, that gets us. <laughs> I mean, I guess we couldn't have beat it either way, but wow, that was unfortunate. We drew, we drew what, nine lands? That's uh, that's not gonna get the job done. Well, I mean, so was that a punt? I guess technically at the same time, it's a punt that didn't have an impact on the outcome of the game. Other than the fact if that didn't have reach, we would actually won. Well, that game actually makes me, oh my goodness, these hands. Oh God. We talked about this earlier that, that we're gonna need a little bit of luck and the magic gods are not smiling upon free white at the moment. Um, not even a little. Well, I think this one's already over. <laughs> oh no. All right, well, land in a smith, which is about 99% to whiff, yeah. Pass the turn. Kaylin, reclusive painter. Well, play the Jeruba. Yeah, five cards gonna be gonna be tricky. Forest and Immerstrom Predator. Uh, sure, Clarion Spirit and a land. Hmm. Oh, these are the the most painful draws. Golly, I'm on it. Untaps. Prosperous Innkeeper and. Outland Liberator, gain some life. Well, so far there's nothing that is, that, uh, there's nothing that has changed my feelings about this deck. Um, obviously, wins and losses have not worked out in our favor yet, but 
the running also has not worked out even a little bit in our favor yet. Like so far, our opponents have all had really good draws and we've had about uh, the worst draws I could imagine. It's not like we've been getting like decent draws and the deck's just not good enough to win. It's been more like mull to five, mull to five, flood out, lose every die roll. So we'll see. We'll see. But obviously, O2 is not the not the start we were looking for. Wait, so so are we are we thinking that that Dakota Four is a, a cheater? If we if we I mean, there's no way we could obviously we could obviously prove it either way. So I don't want to accuse anyone of anything. But I mean, if we land on if we land on the idea that we think it's impossible this deck went 5-0 in a league, then I mean, the only other option is is I guess the the win trading thing. All right, let's let's give this hand a try. We still lost the die rolls. So we're, we're 0 and 3 for die rolls so far, which, you know, is not the, not the luck we were hoping for, but it's a reasonable mixture of lands and spells. Oh, it's white, black control. <laughs> okay. Well, I should have mentioned this in the intro. One of our criteria for getting five wins was, <laughs> was not having to play against white, black control because white, black control is like 90% to be tier aggro decks. Uh, which I assume means is like 190% to be to beat our deck about it. Professor of Symbology. Sure. Grabs and environmental sciences. And passes. Oh my god, more land. More lands! Well, I take back what I said about about our deck actually uh giving us a good hand. It looked good at the at the start, but now that we've drawn only lands, looking a little bit less good. I guess we play this plate armor. The problem is once our opponent plays Meat Hook Massacre or Blood on the Snow or Doom Scar or Path to Peril, then there's not really any rebuilding. <laughs> there's not, that's just not something this deck can do environmental sciences. It just doesn't actually have the, the cards to rebuild from a Wrath opponent reading the plate armor. Plate armor I actually think is a, a reasonable equipment. No well, opponent apparently agrees. Goes attacking, no blocks down to 18. Oh no, oh no. We've drawn a land every single turn. With Without fail, every turn of the game has been a, a planes. Pound it, zap. Portable hole. It's a battlefield raptor. Soren. Reduced to memory is so bad in this deck. Like being able, being able to kill things is good, but leaving mine to three two, boom, battlefield raptor. All right, game two. Yeah, I think there is literally 0% chance we beat the deck that our opponent's playing. Dakota four, did you deceive us? Dakota four, I'm so disappointed. Uh, Dakota four is the, the person in the moto results. Maybe this is a, uh, maybe this one's a meme. We'll play first. All right, that's that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable looking hand. I mean, this matchup still scares me, scares me to death, but this is a reasonable looking hand. Reasonable, reasonable enough. All right, land and battlefield raptor. Opponent. Well, land and clarion spirit. Go attack it. All right, so now we would like to not draw lands. Ever, ever, ever for the rest of the game, opponent plays a planes. And, well, that's a whiff. Clicking on our creatures with their duress. Oh my God, that's a land magic gods. We were specific magic gods, no more lands. <laughs> A fun, a fun uh, mini game with this deck is, will you ever draw a card with Ingenious Smith? <laughs> I think there's four, four artifacts in the deck, so the odds are bad. Really, really, really bad. That's another one of the cards that definitely is not very powerful. Bone at land and Jadar. Well, Chaplain of Alms. Gavany Tapper, make a dork. Attack with everything. Thankfully, it's a decay zombie. I mean, the question is, does our opponent have a rat? Wow, they're blocking. Oh. Well, if they're throwing away Jadar to save a single damage, that is probably a decent sign that our opponent's about to wrath. Or they could have another Jadar, I guess. All right. I mean, that's bad. I'm gonna throw away the zombie. So this means our opponent has another wrath. They just keep coming forever. Okay, well, there's there's the Wrath, Land, and Chaplin go attacking. Opponent down to 10. I mean, we're, we're kind of in this if our opponent doesn't have another Wrath. Ambitious Farmhand, okay. That's not a Wrath. 
Another white source could be Doomscar mana. As Miyug Massacre is annoying. Even now that it's done wrathing, the life gain is is not helpful for what our deck's trying to do. Reduced to memory. Also not helpful. Tap the farm hand, go attacking. Deadly dispute sex the farm hand. I mean, this is it. Pone is down to four. We have lethal. Please, magic gods. Please. No wrath. Gosh darn it. All right, sure. Ah, we knew that was a risk going into it. Black light control is by far the matchup that our deck wants to play the least. Like I said, like tier mono white does not be white black control with any consistency. And they have like Thalias and Spellbinders and so forth. I mean, we're just we're just praying basically. It's basically just a prayer that they don't draw the Raz. Two Miug Massacres, zero, zero percenter. If two Miug Massacres have been resolved. All right. We get to play first. Well, we got Usher of the Fallen. That can that can build us a board, hopefully. Usher of the Fallen, go. What's our opponent on? A little bit light on one drops, a little bit heavy on lands, although Cabrilla's takedown helps a little bit. Go to combat, attack, bows. Please stop drawing lands. <laughs> please, please, please Dakota four, please. Prosperous Innkeeper, well, we can answer that. So portable hole, get rid of the innkeeper. Yeah, let's just do it this way. Just attack and make a token. Usher the Fallen, going off, going off, going off. It's a combo, attacking and paying two. That is the that is the splinter twin of free white opponent. Naya A. Zika's Jerry, it's pretty good. Well. Play the Dawn Guard and Code Spell Cleric. All right. We finally want a die roll. That should be a cause for celebration. It finally happened. Opponent's getting ready for the Lord of the Ring set. Prepared. Got that. Got that claim in. Got that name locked down before uh, before the set comes out. Opponent looking at our Gavany Dawn uh, Gavany Dawn Guard. All right, there's the brutal Cathar. Pays the one. I asked Azika's chariot's a kind of an issue. I mean, we probably got to kill it, but I don't know how we win once we kill it. Opponent. Oh my god, out of their land. And now we can't even kill this. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, Dakota four. So actually kind of an interesting question. Let's say that the person that got the 5-0 published was doing a win trading scam. What can Wizards do about it? Cause that definitely seems, I mean, from Wizards perspective, I guess it would be cheating slash stealing. Like essentially uh, if that is what someone did, that would be more or less just taking money from Wizards, like in the form of Magic Online tickets, but still like, uh, yeah, it's just straight up cheating. So I wonder, I wonder if Wizards tries to police that at all. It seems like they should. It seems like they'd want to. From a, a player's perspective, I guess it doesn't do anything too specific other than make you skeptical of the results. But, well, let's see. If this hand is not enough, that's going to make me lean towards the deck not actually really having much of a chance. Like this hand, two lands, four one drops. If that doesn't do it for free white, then I don't know what's going to. Opponent has some rant, oh my God. All right, that's not ideal. I don't go to combat, attack you. All right, takes it. Well, I guess we play the Battlefield Raptors. Run them out, sneaky, sneaky, re this is the sneaky reach league. So many sneaky reachers. Doesn't even look that tall. How is it just Spare Sentinel getting a flyer? Prosperous Innkeeper. Mm-hmm. More just Spare Sentinels and life being gained. Well, play a land and Canyon Jeroba and go attacking for the big one. Got him. About it. Yep, does some blocking. Planes for our opponent. Oh boy, there's the removal. We've played against a lot of a uh, lot of brutal Cathars, a lot of Skyclave apparitions. But it passes. All right, so our deck gives us the traditional land. Uh, it is good at that. 
I'm playing the land, pump the dorks. Go attack it. Canyon Jerobe doesn't seem that bad. I think the problem is like the decks that would want it aren't necessarily gonna have enough lands to make it good all the time. Although if there's one thing this deck has been good at, it's been drawing a lot of lands. <laughs> so maybe it's better than we think. Pwn it, boom, 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 down to 12, Chaplain of Alms. Go. Yeah, I was thinking we'd kill the Brutal Cathar, but like reduced to memory kind of is an upgrade. We get a, a one, two flyer and our opponent upgrades this to a to a three, two. It's gotta be the worst possible removal spell for the deck. I mean, the upside is it does hit anything, but isn't there a Oblivion Ring? I'm trying to remember. I can't think of the name of it at the moment, but there is a Oblivion Ring. I gotta imagine the Oblivion Ring has gotta be, gotta be. Oh no, gold span. I gotta imagine the Oblivion Ring's gotta be better than Reduced Memory in this deck. Reduced Memory, like, it's got uses. Coming out of the sideboard is a lesson. Like, that's powerful, but just as a main deck removal spell, ooh, ooh. especially in a deck that's trying to attack with small... Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Brutal Gathar. I feel like we've... <laughs> we played against more Brutal Cathars than, uh, yeah, I guess this doesn't even work. Everyone can block with Sneaky Reacher. I mean, it doesn't even, like there's just no, uh, what does our deck do from here? Like how, how do we possibly win from this position? Opponent plays a land. Yeah, it's in with Gold's Mandrake. Hits us. I'll take a Dawn Guard. We're dying in a, so many ways. Actually kind of impressive. If these flip around, they exile the rest of our board. Okay, plate armor, I guess. And uh, so we can try to get plate armor on a, ah, oh, but these are first strikers. Oh, <laughs> mm, showed out of this cult off the top. Oh boy. Into double removal, Dakota. Okay, sex the double mana treasure. Kills our. Dawn Guard. I mean, we're super dead. I'm trying not to scoop early, but we're so dead. Uh, yeah. And I mean, our opponent has another showdown of the Scalds too. Yeah, we're just literally dead. Oh boy. All right, so that's 0-4. Oh boy, oh boy. We're gonna give it another go, but this deck is, it's running out of time to pick up a win. I still think the deck will win. I mean, any deck will win games eventually. Although, oh boy, I lost another die roll. Although, the odds that uh, the deck actually went 5-0 and in a league, Seems to be decreasing by the by the game. So when you play a deck like this and it goes 0 and 5, it's hard to imagine how someone else legitimately went 5 and 0 with it. Legitimately winning a couple games, of course. Like I said, like quite literally, I mean, outside of playing a 60 land deck or something like that, that just obviously does not have the ability to win. Any like halfway functional deck, you're gonna win some percentage of the time. That's just that is just uh, the way magic works. I don't go to combat. Attack. Esper control. Oof. Sounds like a sweeper matchup. <laughs> Sounds like a sweeper matchup. Boom, boom, boom. Boat it. Down to 15. Play the land past the turn. About it adapts. I mean, 15. That is a quarter of the way to our opponents being dead. All right. Me hook massacre. Just kidding. Opponent goes back up to nine. Well, now we're. 5% to our opponent being dead, and we don't have a board. <laughs> oh boy. Well, Skyclave Cleric, 19 turn clock achieved. Opponent passes, get in for one. Down to 18, uh, play the plate armor, I guess. Pass the, oh, memory deluge, sure. Opponent quickly draws to you. At least Spellbinder, it's acceptable. None of the cards in our hand are, are especially good. So, I mean, that's upside of, uh, of playing this deck. Oh, what are you gonna, what are you gonna Spellbind? All of our cards are so bad, we don't even care if they cost two more. <laughs> um, well, try to equip opponent. Let's it go. The best Skyclave Cleric ever. Now you're gonna kill it? Now that you gotta pay ward? All right, opponent, with the, with the ward flex. <laughs> Don't even have to kill it at the optimal time. That's a uh, that's how little our opponent cares about our plate armor. Phonet gets in with Ellie's Spellbinder. 
passes. Well, clarion spirit. Boom. Code spell cleric. Double boom. Second spell. Token encounter. Opponent's going to do a little digging through time. There's probably more Mihook Massacres in their deck. Maybe some Doom Scars too. All right, opponent. How about that turd? Three creatures, five power, one turn. Free white is, is flexing. It's showing its strength. Oh my God. All right. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna concede. There's no, there's just no coming back. Like I know we're not officially technically dead, but there's just, there's no way. I, you know what? We won't scoop yet. We'll give it another turn, but there's no way that we can actually like against a control deck with six cards in hand in our deck, having no, no sources of card advantage and our opponent being at 20, it, it really is as close to 0% as you can be without it being 0%. Like, I don't even know. Like, how could you construct a scenario where we win from there? I guess it would be like our opponent's hand being six lands and then them drawing 10 lands in a row or something. I guess that is mathematically possible. Probably about the same math as like, the earth being destroyed by an asteroid during the during this next game but but it could happen that's a that looks like a functional hand the matchup is obviously horrible but i mean two lands some spells couple of one drops one of them doesn't have any power but that's neither here nor there all right this is your this is your last shot free white otherwise as much as it pains me to say i guess we're gonna have to I guess we're gonna have to attribute it to, to cheating. Well, at least that's not something we have to worry about with Magic Online or Magic Arena results. I don't think there's cheating going on. I think there's, you know, bugs in the system, incompetence, but I don't think it's like, I don't know how you would cheat your way to six wins in a row on, on Magic Arena. I think it would be actually kind of impossible to, I mean, I think it would be impossible to have a, to pair against yourself and like get concessions and so forth. Oh, I wish we had a land there. Well, Smith. There's a couple lands. Now, now we actually want to land. Boom, grow that monk. Mousia. Yeah. Down to 12. This, if our opponent just never draws another land. Oh my God, all right, Jeroba. If our opponent doesn't draw land and we draw land, we win next turn. This is, oh my God, it could happen. You know it's a Mihook Massacre. Oh, God. Oh, and that was a land too. So what did we learn this week about free, white, and standard? And that went pretty horribly. We didn't win a match. We actually didn't even win a game. Although we did come close. Uh, our last game basically came down to a 50-50 if our opponent would draw a land or not. And they did and we lost. Uh, but I think if we kept playing this deck over and over and over again, we'd win some games with it eventually. And we might get lucky and win a match with it eventually. But all things considered, it seems incredibly unlikely that someone actually 5 0 a league on Magic Online with this deck, especially considering the competition on Magic Online is typically higher than the arena ladder so at five wind in a row in a competitive event in a much tougher place to play than we just played and we couldn't even win a game with it so first off as far as the deck uh it's really bad but you could improve it i think you could improve this deck quite a bit with still spending zero rares and mythics still having it essentially be free uh get rid of the reduce to memory cut down on the lands counting the mdfc's there's 28 lands in our white weenie deck which explains why we flooded out so much get rid of the stuff that's just obviously non bowie like smith is a really good card but we just don't have enough artifacts to support it it's always a one one that whiffs uh maybe the plate armors and then just go four of the cards that are actually good like a mono white deck with no rares have four usher of the fallens and four monk of the open hands uh, and just kind of focuses on curving out maybe a better way to pump uh, into some removal spells in the sideboard uh, that's actually a deck that i think could win some games not that it would be a great deck but i think it's a deck that would have the the potentiality of actually winning some games in some matches so more interestingly uh our experience with this deck, the fact that we couldn't even win a game with it, made me investigate what actually happened on Magic Online. And I am fully convinced that 
this is a case of win trading cheating. So if we jump over to Magic Online, one of the neat things about Magic Online is we can actually see league results. So this is the league on Magic Online, and you can see the number of players, you can see the player's name, you can see how many times they went 5-0, went undefeated, you can see the last time they went undefeated. And what this means is we can actually look up the player that got this finish. Uh, Dakota 4 is the player that got the finish, and uh, it's really interesting if we do. So if we sort by screen name here and scroll down, do we find Dakota? Dakota 4, our theory that maybe this was someone who just traded an account, played their first league and lucked into a 5-0, kind of falls apart. This account has 11 5-0s in the fairly recent past. Uh, so there's no chance this was a new player who just lucked into a league, even if we grant that maybe it's possible, which I don't even think it is after we played the deck, but even if we want to take the five opponents in a row conceded to get the 5-0 for Dakota 4, there's no way that happened 11 times. So add that all together, it seems very likely, like 99 point bunch of 9% sure that this is just a case of someone scamming magic online. If we want to go to the next level further, we can actually just look up the Dakota, uh, Dakota 4 account. If we go to uh, the metagame page and do advanced deck search, we can put in the player's name and let's go back to like 2015, but we can actually search for this account. The only finish it is posted, uh, this is the, the deck list we're using for the article, a user submitted deck. The only actual finish this account ever had is the one that made us do this video, the free white deck in the standard league a few days ago. So what this means is all of these wins are very likely to have happened in a short period of time because Magic Online publishes league results twice a week. And if there is a unique deck list, they always publish it. So uh, I haven't heard many problems or even any problems from people saying, oh, I, you know, 5 would with a real unique deck. It didn't show up. So Wizards seems pretty good at that. So I think this more or less says that this Dakota 4 account won 11 leagues within the matter of like three or four days most likely or we would have seen the deck list get posted uh, in one of the previous league dumps and there's just really no way i guess it's theoretically possible that this is someone who has a huge account and for some reason decided to play this new player card only white deck uh, but that seems like a stretch uh, why would an established player with a full account ever play a deck like that so it seems like this is just fully a win trading scam that's going on and the scary part is if you jump down the rabbit hole a little bit further, it seems like this might be really, really common. If we sort by the number of undefeated trophies in Standard League, one of the things that jumped out to me is many of these wins happen at low playtime hours. If we go back to the to the Dakota account for a minute, the last win with the Dakota account happened at 5.53 a.m. on January 27th. Uh, the lowest playtime hours on Magic Online are like 2 a.m. to 8 a.m., something like that, like in the middle of the night Easter time. And if you look at the, the top accounts in Standard, a lot of them have their last finish in that time range, like uh, 5.30 a.m., 7 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, 4 a.m., 2.30 a.m., 2.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 6 a.m. There's so many finishes, 4 a.m., 2 a.m., 4.30 a.m. Many of the top accounts are winning their trophies at this time when it would be possible to scam the system because, uh, as I mentioned before, the way this scam works is you try to queue two of your accounts against each other if there's a whole bunch of people playing, it's not possible because you're going to get matched with someone else. It's not going to work. But in standard where there's only 130 players in a league, and if you play at a really low playtime hour, the odds of you queuing against yourself is pretty high. You might be the only person. Your accounts might be the only accounts that are actually playing standard on Magic Online at those low playtime hours. And that makes me think that this win trading thing is probably happening quite a bit. Also worth mentioning, you could do it with a group of players. Like if we get, you know, 20 people who are all in on the scheme and scoop to each other, other sometimes that would also make it easier to make sure that you were queuing into people who were supporting this game so at first I thought okay well I don't want to be too east coast centric like those are weird playtime hours for me like 2 a.m to 8 a.m but maybe it's you know it's a worldwide game maybe other people play a lot of magic at that time so I looked at some other leagues to kind of confirm and if you look at other leagues Yes, there are occasionally finishes at those low, low playtime hours, 2 a.m., uh, 6 a.m., 6 a.m., but percentage-wise, standard players are much, much more likely to finish their leagues 
in that time frame than top modern players or even top legacy players in modern and legacy you have enough players where you can't really do this win trading scheme so the fact that standard players and when i math it and maybe this has changed because when people last got their finishes constantly changing but when i mathed it out a couple of days ago standard was two or three times more likely to have people at the top of the leaderboard getting their finishes at low playtime hours than modern or legacy where this kind of cheat just wouldn't be possible so i'm just kind of skeptical of standard results from magic online in general like how do we know which of these decks actually 5 would in which one could be part of a scam to just like rip magic online off you would think that a deck looking real and being expensive would at least make it less likely that it's scamming the system but there's really no way of knowing like uh, the way to have no one notice that you're scamming the system at least people like us on the outside would be to play more realistic decks like if you look through this league which was the one published right before the free white league the most out there deck is this mono red deck which is only six dollars on magic on online and if you're making $17 a league with this game that's kind of nothing but if you look at this deck could it be part of a scam sure I mean it's super cheap so it would be possible that someone could use it as that but at the same time could it actually have gotten a 5-0 finish maybe it looks more realistic than the the free white deck with all the weird things and 28 lands and no sideboard this deck it has a real sideboard it's got four ofs goblins might not be a top tier archetype but i see them on the ladder on magic arena it's not like some really really far far out there archetype uh, so this is definitely not an accusation of black haven 7 because for all i know they're a really good goblin player but all this to say i think the problem with this dakota 4 free white scam is they made it too obvious like uh, they didn't even put any effort into this scam uh, when you have 28 lands in your white weenie deck and the numbers are so weird someone's gonna notice it made me notice and try the deck and now I'm convinced there's no way the deck actually got five wins in a row in a league uh, so because the deck is just so far out there and so unrealistic looking it was kind of a red flag and it drew interest when if you spent six dollars on a goblin deck that is still very very cheap and definitely not top tier but looks real enough that you could actually maybe 5-0 with it at least it's not gonna draw a red flag when I saw this deck I thought oh that's cool someone 5 0 with goblins you know kind of a cool budget deck but it's not something that really is gonna draw a ton of scrutiny so I feel like this account the Dakota 4 free white account not only was it part of a win trading scam almost assuredly but it did it in such a lazy way that it was actually noticeable so at this point I don't know what's real and what's fake on Magic Online Leagues. And until Wizards figures out a way to stop this win trading scam, I guess we just have to take all the league results for standard with a grain of salt because there's really no way that Free White Deck actually won a league. And if you look at all the information, the number of leagues won and the time of day and all you add all that together, it seems pretty likely that this win trading scam might actually be happening quite a bit on Magic Online. And many of the, the top standard accounts could theoretically be part of it obviously not accusations but there's a lot of accounts that have you know 10 to 15 wins and have weird playtime hours and don't have their deck list published anywhere and if you add all that together it's at least worth being skeptical of these results so hopefully wizards can figure out a way to fix this because it's definitely not a good look to think that maybe most of the standard play or a meaningful percentage at least is, uh, is people just trying to scam the system. So anyway, that is free white. I think the verdict is very likely a scam. And that is the rabbit hole of win trading scams. I'm standard on Magic Online. Again, uh, don't worry about other formats. There's enough players this can't happen. Standard and I think maybe vintage are the only formats where it could actually really happen. And vintage, if someone, you know, 5 0 with a free white deck, everyone would notice that immediately. It's a pretty tight knit community. The decks are more expensive. So I think standard is really the only place it could happen. Theoretically, vintage, but vintage decks are expensive. The community is really tight net so I think it would be noticed right away uh, so I wouldn't worry about results from other places I wouldn't I'm not thinking oh this modern result might not be real but for standard at this point I don't know what's real and what's fake when it comes to magic online results so I guess we got to treat them similar to magic arena salts where yeah they're interesting they're entertaining but definitely take them with a grain of salt because it seems like this win trading scam might actually be pretty prevalent in standard in specific on magic online so anyway that is free white
realer scam looking like a scam to me that's been our video for today so let me know what you think is there another explanation for this is there another way this free white deck could have maybe actually 5-0 a league or how do you explain the other 11 5-0s from that same account was there another explanation other than this win trading scam going on how many accounts do you think are doing this like how big of a problem is it how can wizard stop it let me know what you think in the comments Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed falling down the win trading rabbit hole and also losing repeatedly with free white. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.